Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the New York round robin. Uh, this is the second round, and in this round, I am playing against Oliver Barbosa, who I've played now in 2016, 2019, and now 2021, and every single time I've played with the Black Beezes. Um, I actually expected before this game for Oliver to go d4, but I would have not been surprised if he had played the move knight f3, because actually this worked very well for him back in 2019. We had a complex game, but he ended up outplaying me. I played d5, and I didn't know what he was going to do. I thought maybe he would go e3. He's been playing this recently online in Blitz, but he went back for g3, which is exactly what we played two years ago. Um, and I was going uh, to, you know, I, sorry, I played this two years ago, um, and then he played c4, but for this game, I was like, you know what, I'll decide at the board what to do. I also kind of contemplated maybe going for f5, like trying to play a Dutch, um, but uh, I decided to go with knight d7. You might remember that I played this in Spice Cup. I was not aware if he had seen that video or that game. I mean, probably not that video, considering he's a busy guy who probably has many students. Um, but uh, probably I thought he had seen the game because it was, you know, it was like a week ago. But maybe not. So I played knight d7. And he played d4, preventing me from playing e5. And I played knight b6. Now, Safal so Bora played a4, a5, knight c3 against me, which I kind of fine-tuned this morning. And this morning I also, uh, I also took a look at this variation um, where h6 was played by Vytashek, Radoslav Vytashek, uh, against Alireza Firuja in Tata Steel. And the point is that in many lines, when the bishop comes out, it gets hunted down brutally in these lines. Um, but uh, h6 spends some time just getting out of the way. But notice where the knight and the pawn are, because Oliver played like this against me. Now, this, this move order is ex extremely rare. And this is now the second time where by the fifth move of the game, in me trying to go for this variation, my opponents just play something that basically never gets played. White either plays a4 and then moves on, or castles knight d2, b3, bishop b2. Oliver played knight d2 right away, and I didn't want to go for this position where my, my bishop gets chased down, so I decided, you know what, I don't think there's much of a difference between where the knight is, I'm going to play h6. This has been seen once before in a game between Pragnananda Ramesh Babu and uh, Parham Maksudlu. Two very strong players, I think in a speech chess championship match. I didn't know that during the game, I only knew it afterward. And I was like, I don't get it, he's just gonna go here, I'm gonna go bishop f5, now my bishop can always get away, and then he played c4. And I was like, huh, that move is a move, it's a move, okay. Um, the point is that he's giving me this, and first of all, he can actually just take. It looks like he can't, but he's gonna go queen a4. Now, I thought about going for this position. Something like this, maybe bishop f5, castles e6, and okay, like, white is always slightly better, because white has this bishop, which the diagonal has not closed, and I didn't want to go for this position, even if I could, like, win a tempo on the queen and then put my bishop right here. I thought this was fine, and maybe black equalizes effortlessly if you're, like, a super GM. I was a little bit uncomfortable with this, and apparently, if I take on c4, the machine is like, yo, white doesn't even have to take. White can just go here. It's actually really hard for me to defend this pawn. Like, if I play bishop to e6, what he'll do is he'll just take the full center. So it's like I've played a queen's gambit where I took on c4. For some reason, my knight is not on this square. It's on that square. And I've given him the whole center. Like, this doesn't make any sense. So dc4, but it's still maybe the best move. And it might just straight up be the best move in this entire position. Um, white played castles before. Um, but he, he did this, and I, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to play a little passively this game. Uh, and I'm going to let him come to me. Because now he has basically one pawn break in the position, and if he rushes with e4, this trade is actually fantastic for black. Why? Because he's overextended. It gives me full control of d5. I play knight f6, I play bishop e6, bishop d5, black has zero problems the remainder of the game. Complete equality, probably. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to be a little passive, and I'm just going to play g6. Now, the engine wants me to go here. I don't think my bishop belongs on e7, I'm better than the computer. I think g6 is a perfectly good move. However, I have lost time. I've lost time because my knight went there, there, and back. It's kind of like we played a Slav defense, and he got three extra moves, literally. If you can just bear with me for a moment, take a, take a, pic a mental image of this position in your brain. Like, imagine this, like, d4, d5, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, knight d2, right? This is what it looks like. Now, from this point forward, white is just three moves ahead of me. Like g3, g6, bishop g2, h6, and now c5. And now, white gets to go castles and play another move. 
which is basically where we are in the game. Like, look, I'm going to jump back to the game. Now we are back in the game, G6, and now it's like the same exact position. So it's pretty funny, but it, it's interesting because this is not really the best plan for white. So I'm like, I don't get how he's going to make progress. He thinks for a while he plays queen c2. I played this, this, and castles. I was actually shocked he played b3. I didn't understand b3 at all. Um, I thought just you, you have to take as much space as possible. And um, I, I, yeah, I see the computer wants me to go a5, but I actually thought this transformation was bad for me. I guess I misevaluated that. I guess this is good for... I guess that explains why he didn't go b4. Because uh, I really didn't think I was trying to make any openings here. Because, you know, b-file and... But, yeah, computer thinks that I should go a5. Okay, well, there you go. That kind of explains why he played b3. Because he cannot defend his pawn with the pawn. I just take and the rook is hanging there. Um, so he played this. I castled. And now I was like, I need to come up with a game plan. This entire game depends on these two squares. So what does that mean? Well, for example, again, he can't really play e4, but he only can't play e4 because my knight is in the center. If I, for example, move away, I thought he actually could play e4. Turns out that's incorrect. Turns out that actually I can still put a knight on f6 after that, and I'm still winning the battle for the center squares, which is very interesting. Um, I thought I was going to make a couple of useful waiting moves. I, I didn't know exactly like what to do with my queen, my rook. I also was thinking maybe I can just play e5 in one go. And the point being, I can win the pawn back. I can't, because he actually just shoves it forward. And now, if I ever take it, this is hanging. So I have to be very careful. So for that reason, I actually played rook e8. I played rook e8 with the intention to play e5. And now there is no e6. However, I was like, wait a minute, maybe there is e6. Because maybe he can just go knight d4 at the end of all this. And the computer is correct. Even though I can transform the center, I'm not transforming it in the right way. So just because I transformed the center doesn't mean it was a good transformation. Knight d4, and he's still going to keep pushing. I gave him play. So I'm like, you know what? Let's pump the brakes on this e5 idea. Let's actually just take as much space as we can away from him. And I really wanted to play f5. Now, how the hell am I going to play f5? I have to move this knight. How the hell am I going to move this knight without allowing e4? I don't know. Great question. So um, he played b4 now. I played queen c7. And here he played a very annoying move. I was actually very unhappy when he played this move, although the, co the computer doesn't think it's that big of a problem. He played this move h3, and my idea had been to play knight f8. I wanted to play knight f8 and play like maybe bishop f5, and then play like something to e4, and slowly take space on this side of the board and win the battle over here. But I thought knight e5 was super annoying. Like, I, I just didn't know what to do about this. For example, if I try to trade his knight, then he plays f4, and now he's much better because I simply gave him too much space. I let him consolidate and take way too much space, and this position is miserable because slowly I will have no breaks in the position remaining at all. So I'm like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm going to play knight h5. Now, I thought knight h5 would give him e4, and I thought that from here the following moves would happen. Takes, here, now his knight gets there, and when I try to trade it, it goes here. That's what I thought was going to happen. And then, I, you know, he's got b5, he's got d5. My knights are really stupid, but he can't play g4. Like, he cannot play this move because now he's just getting crushed. So, in, a, in kind of a funny way, I was like, knight h5 will permanently prevent g4 because I will just go here, and then now I'm going to play f5, and he has to play e4. I think it's the critical move. And then homie just played this, and I was like, oh, yeah. Like, obviously, because now he's going to try to play g4. I'm actually one move away from being just completely lost. So, for example, if he plays g4 now, and now knight e5, I can probably resign. Um, I just thought that this position was horrible. <laughs> I mean, resign is a bit of a... <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch, maybe. Um, but I was like, okay, like, I, I don't want this to happen. So, can I still play f5? And I thought I couldn't. I thought he was really clever. I was like, wait, he's going to go here. But I thought, wait a minute... Sure, I can't take. And I thought I couldn't take because not because of this, because then I just guard everything. Everything's protected. But because of this, this, and now a really counterintuitive move. Not taking the pawn and defending everything and attacking me, but shoving it forward. And when I realized that g5 was the idea, because after it takes, takes, yes, I can protect this. Yes, I can protect this. But what's the major move in his position to clamp me down? f4. Once he gets f4, I'm in a permanent bind. I'm much worse. I'm not happy. So I was like, oh, I can't take. So I'm going to come back. 
And I was actually pretty excited here. I was like, well, now this is a different story because if takes, takes queen f5, I move my knight with a discovered attack. Oh, look at that. We're in business. It's the best I got, right? It's the best I got. That's what I thought. It's the best I can do with this position because if he doesn't take me, if he plays like, let's just, uh, if he like takes, takes, he has to take because otherwise I would have taken him. But like something like this, now knight e4. I mean, now black is chilling. I mean, I, I thought this was a very good position. Maybe e6, king h8, knight e4. I thought I had plenty of play. He took, and what I thought was his best move here is queen e5. I thought he should go for this end game. Oh, no, no, if I take, then two knights are hanging. I thought he should go for this end game, and I, and I thought maybe white is better. The computer is completely unafraid and thinks I'm a moron, but I think the computer is a moron, so we're kind of in an infinite loop. Um, but uh, he actually played a move that I, I, didn't, I didn't even think about. I thought he had two moves. I thought he had queen e5 and queen c2. And then he went here. And I was like, really? So it looks annoying, and actually it's the best move. Stockfish thinks it's like a plus one position here. Like, his idea is 95 f4, so time is of the essence. When I say time is of the essence, what does that mean to you? Where do we move this knight? You want to bring it back, and you want to like kick the queen out, but this is terrible, because white just comes back, plays f4, and I'm, I'm busted, positionally. So if time is of the essence, what do we play here? You have to play knight a4. You have to win time. You have to win time. Now, I assume the best move here was to play this, at which point I got super excited because I came up with the following idea. Boing, bam, bing. So now he's got to get out and knight d6 to go bishop f5. That's actually what I was really excited to play. Knight b5 um, and then uh, knight d6. It turns out... Yo, this is how savage engines are. It turns... I'm not even joking. You know what the best move here for white is? I'm not kidding. King h1. And black is lost. King h1. Not a bishop move, but king h1. Why? Because if I take... Bishop takes d5 check. I can't take with the knight because my rook hangs. And he plays rook g1. And I lose. e6, there is queen f6. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's rid I, I think, I, I like, from a distance... No human being in the world puts the bishop on a3 and leaves it to die. I mean, king th th that could be in a book, king h1. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, the thing is, if he moves and I go here, it's equal. So actually, I was right, but I was also completely wrong. <laughs> um, I, to be honest, I'm not even sure I would have seen that in the game. I like, like um, the fact that he can go king h1. Like, if he thought on knight b5 and play king h1, I would have probably just like been like, what the... F yeah, it's crazy. Um... So he went back to c1. Now, I still thought bishop a3 was the best move for white during the game. When he went here, I was like, that's a step in the wrong direction. Now, what I need to do is I need to find the right configuration of defense for his incoming assault, right? Because he's going to go knight e5. So the engine here is such a piece of shit. It says to go e5. Like, what? The point being, you, you just sack. You just sack. You just sack. You just sack the rook. Just sack the rook. And then, like, you go, like, here, and apparently you trade queens and you're not even worse. I mean, okay. Like, if, you, if someone plays like that against you, you just report them for cheating and move on. Um, I found the second engine line, which is far more human, which is first moving the rook out of the way. And when he comes in, I thought this was very nice. Knight back to h7. The point is that bishop f5 is coming, and so is knight g5, and I'm, I'm getting more active. And now this knight can kind of jump in as well. The engine is still convinced after king h1 that white is, like, much better. Like, it, it, every bit of play for white is based on king h1, which, well, what are you going to do? Um, I expected his next move, which is e4. However, I think he missed my next move. I'm actually completely lost if not for my next move. Um, e4 is a very nice move. The point is that you're, you're now suddenly threatening to open two pieces at once because here your knight is out of the game, but with one move, if I take, now you're coming in with the bishop or the knight, your attack is much faster than my counterplay. So it's basically a game of inches. Like, it, 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 I have to be very precise. When I saw before playing knight h7 that on e4 I had the, the move that I found in the game, I got very excited because at this point I actually thought I was going to win the game. We both have about five minutes on the clock because it's like, it was a complex game. We were thinking a lot. So I played knight c3. We maybe have six, seven minutes. Knight c3 is the move, by the way. Um, this looks really scary for white, I thought, because... 
I'm threatening knight e2. So for example, if e takes d5, I play check. I can go back here and threaten stuff. I can attack the queen real quick. I can take on d4, completely kicking the defenders off of this knight. Very scary looking position. But then he played rook e1. And I was like, oh yeah, um, that actually does a pretty good job defending. Because if I take, that really backfires on me. I'm now losing again. Because bishop f5, which looks like I'm getting somewhere, he just goes here. I actually just lose the game. It's completely lost. Like, look, take, take, like, let's say I take this. He just goes here. I, I mean, I just can't stop his attack. I'm not fast enough. So I'm like, damn it. Rookie one. What do I do? Only move that doesn't lose. Knight g5. Um, but I actually still think I'm winning. Like, I, like, I, like, oh, not winning, but I'm playing for a win. I actually thought, like, in all these tactical complications with my horsies, these loose pawns in the center, I mean, I've got rook f6 always, I actually thought maybe I'm going to get the better of these complications. Because, for example, I'm threatening, I'm threatening h3. And then I was like, if he plays h4, which I think he's going to do, I wrap back this way. And this looks problematic for white, because I'm threatening the pawn and knight f4. ed5, knight f4. Like, I was not sure at all he was going to survive this. And then I realized he can play a move that looks impossible. You see, he can play knight f3. Just bringing two more pieces to the party. Completely abandoning defense of this pawn. I thought he couldn't play that move. My original intention was just to take with a knight. The problem is that this is too strong. However, we always have a draw. Where is the draw? I will show you in a moment. I took on e4. I actually thought he might sack the exchange. And at this point, we both got a minute on the clock. I don't know what I would have played here, but the engine is showing exactly what I was thinking, which is this and rerouting the knight to the middle and then the bishop. Fascinating defensive idea. Just reconfiguring your pieces so that your light scored bishop gets out. And I saw that, and I was like, is he going to sack the exchange? So I took an e4, and then he kind of hit me with a dynamite here. Uh, I did not expect this move. I thought this move was actually impossible. This. I was like, wait, but he has no threats. What the hell is he doing? I thought he just couldn't play this move, because a very simple pawn takes knight, and then I go rook f6. Right? I mean, I just play rook f6. Turns out he can play bishop takes h6, because of this, white to play and win, folks. What is the defending piece of the entire black position? How do you remove it? Oops. And after bishop h3, black can resign. I can't stop mate. So I was like, oh. Okay, let's repeat moves. But wait a minute. Do I have to? Can I block? Can I block with either of the pieces? For example, here, take, take, knight g5. I don't know, maybe I can play like rook b8 and discover the attack on the queen. Can the queen get trapped? And I decided to repeat moves. I decided to repeat moves and make a draw. Um, and it turns out that even though I thought that I was going, uh, like I was missing an opportunity by repeating moves with a minute on the clock, both of us had very little time. It turns out if I had played knight f8, that the position is plus seven for white after it takes, takes knight g5. And it turns out that if I had played bishop to f8, then after knight g5 straight up, white is plus four. I thought maybe bishop f8 would get played, and even this position is better for white, because he just has way too much activity. Oh, not knight g5, maybe bishop f5 here, but he just has way too much activity. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why I didn't go for this. So we repeated moves and we made a draw. Very crazy game. Uh, good start for me, one and a half out of two. Gonna go get some food, uh, gonna go rest up, and um, I've got a game against Mr. Alexander Lenneman, 2640 rated player, this evening. And remember, all courses 33% off. Use code New York. You know how it is. Get out of here. See you for the third round.